So you guys know about flash mobs. Uh, well, now all of a sudden there is a new phenomenon. It's known as cash mobs, where a group of people agree to go to an independent store, a mom and pop shop, and they will each spend $20 on whatever product they're selling. And this is a way to help support independent businesses. Now, this started in the United States. A blogger by the name of Christopher Smith in Buffalo, New York, started this trend. And now it's actually traveling abroad. You're seeing this happen in the UK and in, in um, Germany. And it's really great. It makes me really happy and I think it's a feel good story for the holiday season. No, I love it. Uh, in fact, I love it so much I think we should do a cash mob online at maybe the youngturks.com where everybody becomes a member. I'm not saying anything, I'm just saying, I mean, but if you'd want to do a mob, probably right now is a good time. No, all right, seriously, I love this. It reminds me of, and I just watched it because of Christmas season, It's a Wonderful Life, mm -hmm. where at the end George Bailey needs uh, money and everybody comes in and starts just giving him money. They're like, because he, because he, you know, had been great to them their whole lives, etc. He's like, oh, stop it now! Come on, come on, cut it out! Okay, give me the money. That's great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, and, and that's what it is: is little guys sticking up for other little guys. And look, m cash money r uh, rules the world, is what I understand. And so here, this is a really effective and powerful way of of helping people you know, fight the big corporate machines. Aside from being a feel-good story, it also highlights the importance of the middle class and how important the consumer is, and there's never enough emphasis on that. There's always the emphasis on giving the tax breaks to the companies because they're the supposed job creators. Well, what about the middle class that goes out there and buys the product? I mean, think about the purchase power here in this story, right? These consumers have the power to keep these independent businesses alive. These small businesses that Republicans pretend like they care about so much. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every time Republicans say small business, of course, they mean giant multinational corporation. Exactly. If a small business actually came to the Republicans and said, look, I don't have any money. I'm actually in trouble because I'm competing with a guy who's your biggest donor. Can you help me out? The Republicans say, oh, yeah, I'll help you out here. Turn around. Well, shit, just stab him right in the back. That's how I'll help you out. Yeah. So, and they, look, they do that literally like, it, not literally. They don't actually stab people in the back. Um, through passing rules and regulations, that is to the great advantage of the larger companies and to the great disadvantage of the smaller companies. For example, in so many towns, uh, since Walmart pays so little wages, uh, the rest of the taxpayers have to pick up the bill for Medicaid, yeah. uh, health care expenses, etc., for Walmart workers. But a lot of times the small business owners don't have that advantage. So they're actually paying more for their workers because they're trying to be decent guys and pay for their pensions, their health cares, etc. And it provides Walmart a huge advantage. You think the government doesn't know that? Of course they know that. Another example of that is McDonald's, by the way. I feel like McDonald's has been let off way too easy when it comes to these stories. I mean, they pay their employees very, very little, despite being very profitable. And on top of that, a lot of their employees have to depend on public services um, and social programs because of the fact that they're not paid enough. Right, so here is uh, something that nobody can argue with. Even the yeah. Republicans can't argue with people spending their money on a business, right? So people come in and say, look, here's how we're going to help. We're going to even the playing field a little bit. And they get something in return. They get the goods. It's not like they're just giving the money away. So they went to a bookstore in, in England and they got books, yeah, right? They so did. it they makes sense. Books. And so when you go to theyoungturks.com, you would get a membership for the best talk show in the country and in the world. I'm not saying anything, I'm just saying. Definitely check that out. Um, by the way, um, John Iderola found a video of a, of a cash mob in Cleveland, and I, I want to take a look at it because I Did think they it do might any be. Uh, row boating or boat boat rowing. <laughs> Maybe that well, was it a flash mob, cash mob. So it's a little okay. different. Okay, you're, you're not you, you don't have to dance at a cash mob. No, okay, you don't have to. You should though. In a few minutes, the cash mob takes over Big Fun Toys, an independent toy and gift store. I'm honored. This is how can you not be happy? This is wonderful. I mean, look at my store. I mean, it's this is great. The cash mob concept is simple. People come together and each spend at least $20 at a local business. I think it feels great. I definitely want to tell more people about it and have them come out again to the next one. Aw. Yeah, God bless, man. Uh, together, we'll be undefeated. We cannot be beat. <laughs>